Hey, what's going on guys? Flick here and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 17 career mode with Southampton. A few things to get into as we approach February. First off, I want to give you an update on the teams that we will be playing in today's episode. Next, I'll be getting into a squad report. And finally, I want to give you an update on our player training. In terms of the agenda for today's episode, we'll be starting off with a match against West Ham United at St. Mary's on the 4th then a match against Sunderland on the 12th, and then EA are going to hit us with that scheduling cheese. We have a ton of matches to play in this two-week time span, but we will be closing off the episode today with a match at St. Mary's against Leicester. We have a few new players into the side for this squad report, so it will be interesting to see if they do have any growth so far. And of course, we do need to keep an eye on our two Youth Academy players that we are developing so that we can achieve that Youth Academy objective. I mentioned it about every episode, but it's so important for us because it's a high objective for us here at Southampton, so we'll need to be keeping an eye on Benjamin and Mama Wepa, as well as Adam Cameron. And so far, they really haven't gone up too much, but we've only been training them for about a month. So I'm not too worried about it. I think as long as we continue to give them some play time, they will be developing as a player and we can see out those objectives set for us by the board at the beginning of the season. We won't be making any changes to our first two slots in the player training. Mama Wep and Cameron will basically be getting those two training spots for the remainder of the season, but the last three are up for grabs. And I try to rotate the players around a little bit so that everyone can achieve their potential and improve a little bit through this training. First off, I want to train up Harrison Reed because he's been stepping up big time in game, scoring that goal against Exeter City in the FA Cup. So I want to give them play time as well as training time. Next up, we will be training a Another midfielder in Sally Uchan, whose finishing has been dreadful in the last couple of episodes. So maybe by working on a sharpshooting, that can look to improve. Finally, we'll be training up a winger for our final training spot, and it will be Nathan Redmond, also a player that hasn't been the best at his finishing, so we'll also be working on his sharpshooting. I didn't plan on having this monthly scouting update for y'all before that game against West Ham United, but here we are. A scout has returned for the first time from Japan, and we'll see what kind of prospects we do have from Japan. In the past, I've had some fantastic results from these countries in Asia, and we'll see if that does continue in FIFA 17. And right away, we do have a 77 to 94 player to add to our Youth Academy. Moving on to 71 to 94. And now 55 to 75, 62 to 86. 60 to 82 and closing things out with a high potential player 79 to 94. Our first team will be coming out for this one at St. Mary's and we have made a few changes due to that Buffal injury. We have Jay Rodriguez playing as our left winger instead of striker and then we move Sebastian Holler in to our striker position. I don't mind that change because Sebastian Holler has been in fantastic form along with Jay Rodriguez so we really get the best of both sides by using this current lineup. Because we have two less matches played than Spurs in the Premier League, they have an eight-point advantage over us in the league table. We'll have to make sure we keep on form with them and pick up wins, including against this match against West Ham United, a team we're very familiar with because we had a FIFA 16 career mode with them. But I have to say, this West Ham team is vastly different than what I use with them. Oh, that's not a great bit of play in Lanzini. Sticks out of foot and ends up getting the interception. Now Andy Carroll over to Lanzini again. And the guy who started the play ends up finishing it. First goal goes to West Ham United. Only 10 minutes into the game. And it's been an abysmal start. And once again, it's those small mistakes from the back that end up costing us. We've been solid from the back for most of the season. And our defense has been one of our best attributes. But those little mistakes, the legendary difficulty, are going to make you pay. Another big steal for us. And this time it's Jay Rodriguez waiting for the run to be made by Pierre-Emil Hoiber on the left, cutting it in, looking to shoot from this kind of range, and that one sailing over the crossbar. That seems to be a common problem with Hoiber. He gets in those right kind of positions, but his finishing needs to be a bit better. A lot of the bounces seem to have been going West Ham's way in this one, but we really just need that one break. We've been known to be very clinical with our chances, and this might be our break with a corner kick. We do have Sebastian Holler there in the middle, and Van Dyke trying to outmuscle that number 21, but we'll play to the near post, and hope that Holler makes that run. We'll send it in. And it falls out wide to Jordi Klassi. Cedric. Back to Klassi. Going to bang it from this kind of range. And again, back at it with those chip shots. And that's not even something I'm trying to do. We struggle to get shots on target with these kind of weather conditions. That's very much the case again today. However, I will make a change in the hopes of just bringing on some fresh talent into the team. I think you guys know what kind of change I will be making. We'll bring on Aguirre. And I think I'll substitute him on for Jordi Klassi, who's kind of a box-to-box -box center defensive mid. And I think Aguirre definitely fits that mold. 
It's a decent attack being made by us. If we can get one more overlap run, Tadic finding Ward Prowse and needs to shoot from this kind of range. He'll get this one on target, and James Ward Prowse has been the man to be clinical for us. He'll dead fish there, and it's tied up in the 50th minute. What a run, and what a pass by Dusan Tadic. James Ward Prowse just beating Adrian on his far post. All of a sudden, Siokan Torre. Looking to send in across Andy Carroll. You need to be finishing those kind of chances. You would have expected him to get that header goal. But now Ward Prowse trying to start the attack for us. It's Jay Rodriguez using a fake shot. And seeing the couple of runs on the left. Sebastian Haller plays it back inside. Now it's Pierre-Emil Hoiber. Needs one more overlap run to be made. And it's Jay Rodriguez making that run once again. Could cross it. That needs to be a header by Sebastian Haller. But he loses hold of it. Rodriguez once again. West Hammer giving us chance after chance. If we can have that run being made by Cedric, it could be one final opportunity for us before we make a couple of substitutions. Just trying to get something to happen. Aaron Cresswell gets it cleared. 20 minutes to go, and we have a couple of tired players. Pierre-Emil Hoiber will be coming off, and we'll drop Sally Uchan a little bit further back for this game. Trying him out that left center mid, and maybe he's just not fit to be a cam. I thought with his statistics, that would be his best position. But no, we're going to try him out at the left center mid. And we'll also bring on the man who has been bagging in goals and making an impact on every single game. Jake Hesketh in at center attacking mid. Oh, well, Aguirre might not be the tallest, but he can win headers still. And now it's Jake Hesketh spotting out the run by Jay Rodriguez. Held it up just in time, but Semedo ends up getting it cleared. And these last 10 minutes are going to be tense. Both teams are looking to get a win. And I think we do have the slight momentum shift. Going our way, Sally Uchan finding Aguirre, trying to find Tadic here on the right. Gets tackled, but wins it back in the process. Ref, that should have been a penalty. Fair play to West Ham in this one. A 1-1 one -one draw, in my opinion, is a fair result. Although we did have the shots advantage, I felt like we weren't clinical enough on those shots. Dusan Tadic picking up the man of the match with an 8.3. Ward Prowse with an 8.2. And those are really the two players I can consistently count on match after match. Sometimes we have other players step up, but Tadic and Ward Prowse are so consistent. With this game against Sunderland, and then a game against Leicester City just two days away. I have to use our second team for one of those matches. And with Sunderland being dead last in the league table, I feel like using our second team for this match would make the most sense. So this is the team we will be using. And still some quality players in here. Shane Long. Every time he seems to get a start, he bags in goals. And Sally Uchan, although his finishing wasn't the best in the last match, we'll try him again at that center attacking mid. And maybe he'll make his mark on this game. We'll see if the Stadium of Light can shine a light on Sunderland's dark spell this season. The team is by no means bad, but they're not exactly great. And I would say our team, even our second team, is superior. Don't you tell me Barini's about to score on me. Sunderland have one win at home so far this season. And they're going to get one of the jammiest goals, but it is offside. I was about to flip out because that goal was so bad. And that would be a goal Sunderland do score. That's a great interception by Harrison Reed. And he will find Sally Uchan, who had to play the through ball. Unfortunately, the defender stepped in and made the interception. Now Barini, who created that offside goal for Sunderland early on in the match, will eventually land a Kirchhoff. If we can apply that pressure, I feel like the Sunderland defense just makes too many mistakes from the back. And maybe that could be the reason why they played so poorly all season. But we'll be playing high pressure for the remainder of this game. Pretty sure one of our players are injured again. You can see Cameron, the number 31, walking off the pitch. And I don't know how many episodes in a row we've had injuries. And I've actually considered adjusting the slider so it doesn't happen as often. But then again... You know, it's, it's part of career mode. You have to factor that into plans. So uh, that's not something I really want to mess with. Another first half with not much happening. Sunderland were the dominant team hanging on to 64% of the possession. Beats me how a relegation zone team can outpass us and outshoot us in the first half. But hey, career mode is what it is. And I actually have some bad news with our right winger, Cameron. Looks like he has picked up a slight knock. So I'll be substituting him off. And maybe that's for the better. We can bring Dusan Tadic in at that right wing position. The rest of our team has played pretty solid. I might look to make some substitutions later on, but for right now, I'll keep things as is. Even if we did lack the shot creation in the first half, I know that if we just get that one opportunity to make Sunderland pay on a mistake, then we can get the goal. And McCarthy, what, what were you doing? I'm not even sure what he was thinking. If he just would have punched it away, not toward goal, 
it would have been an easy clearance, but Jermaine Defoe ends up pouncing on the opportunity. It's 1-0 for Sunderland. Not much seems to be working for us in this game, so I'll bring on Sebastian Haller as the big man up front for Shane Long. When in doubt, bring on a tall player who might be able to get a head goal from a corner kick, a free kick, whatever it may be. We also have a tired midfielder in Reed and Romeu, and we have Aguiar here on the bench, so I'll bring him on for Harrison Reed. Here we are on the attack once again, Romeu trying to find Lloyd Isgrove, who's gotten around the Sunderland defense so well right here and could cross it in to the far post. And we win ourselves a corner kick. These are exactly the chances I do want. And I see Sebastian Holler there creeping on the near post. We'll get it to him. And it's a kick save by Pickford. Sunderland get it cleared once again. And it might just be a clean sheet for them. There we go. Some decent passing right here. Holler playing it to Lloyd Isgrove. Needs to finish from here. And he hits it on the near post. Hits the side netting though. Probably our best chance all game. Just some nice link up play between Lloyd Isgrove and Sebastian Holler. I don't discredit him because that's a tough angle. But I would have loved for him to score there. If we're going to make something happen, we best do it right now. Only three minutes of added extra time. And we'll have to move quickly if we do want to get that tying goal. Even a draw today is not the result I was looking for. But I'd rather take a draw than a complete loss entirely. Romeu. Getting by a couple of Sunderland defenders. Someone needs to make the run. And it's Aguirre running it to the byline. I'll try to send in the cross. Maybe win another corner kick. And this is how the match will end. Our keeper's up. We'll loft it to the penalty marker. And someone needs to get on it. It's going to be Mama Wepa who wins the header. But Jordan Pickford, well done today. He deserved a clean sheet. And to be fair, we deserve the loss due to the play of our keeper. Really glad to see that teams in the relegation zone seem to play better than teams that are in Champions League spots. But moving on to the player ratings, if you guys can't tell, I'm a little bit salty from that game. But I think the man of the match would have to go to Jordan Pickford or Van Anholt. Indeed, Van Anholt does get it with an 8.3 rating. On the bright side, Adam Cameron will only be out with a bruised shoulder for five days. So he'll return quickly to our second team. We'll close off the episode today with a match against Leicester City. And I'd love to end off the episode with the win. However, we do have the EuroLeague to think about in two days' time. So if we can go into the half with a lead, I would take off some of our more notable players like Sebastian Haller, who is slightly lower on his fitness than the rest of the players around him. So that's the plan. But first things first, let's pick up a win. Leicester City have undergone some pretty drastic changes in this crew mode save and as such it's affected their performance in the Premier League not even within the top 10 but that strike partnership is still a good one. Slomani and Musa is a dangerous combo. Oh, well done by Nathan Redman and we could have a chance here if we can play it over the top to our striker Sebastian Haller takes a nice touch and suddenly the Leicester City defense has come back and defended well but we're still on it. And find someone open. <laughs> no one's really showing for him. We'll have to start over and uh, try to work it from this 18-yard mark. Nathan Redman cutting it inside. Skill move didn't work out, but we retain possession. Hoiber to PA. Back to Hoiber in the middle. He'll crack this one with his left foot. And again, over the crossbar. This is the kind of build-up play I've been looking for. PA with a ton of space. We'll send in the cross. That has to be a finish by Sebastian Haller. No doubt about it. And he runs right into the keeper, getting up in his face and showing why Southampton is the superior side to Leicester City. That's what we've been waiting for. Oslamani well, is splitting our entire defense. And you're kidding me. He puts that away. I thought we had that defended well. But Slomani just runs through our entire defense. For a second, I thought we didn't even have any defenders back. You can see we had those two center backs. But no one closed him down and Slomani equalizes. It really sucks when you work hard for a goal and then the CPU comes back and scores a goal like that. But all we can do is try to add on a second and play better defensively. Because that was just horrible on my behalf and also the CPU's behalf. But here we go again. Hoiber. Looking for the passes around him. We'll play it in the middle to J-Rod. Seeing that through ball, we'll hit it first time with Ryan Bertrand. That left back finishing coming into play. This is a decent chance for Nathan Redmond. If he can burba spin inside, he ends up stopping the ball unintentionally. And now we can get a chance by working it around. I see Sebastian Haller holding off the defender, but Daniel Marte getting the interception. It looks like we will go into the halftime break 1-1. It'll be a pretty simple pep talk for me to the boys. That pep talk has to consist of getting more chances. We're holding on to possession. We're playing fairly solid defensively apart from that one error. But we just need to get more shots on target. That's been the problem in today's episode. And it's been the problem again in this match. I'd like to conserve Sebastian Haller for our EuroLeague match. So I'll take him off and bring on Shane Long. Not a bad substitute to make. Oh, I see that run on the right. Go on, Nathan Redman. Get a touch on this. And Burba's been inside. You have a couple of Leicester City players to beat. He's gotten by one. He's gotten by two. Could square this one in the middle. Needs to be a finish by Shane Long. And it's in the back of the net for us. We finally 
get that second goal and guess who it's Shane Long the substitute again making his mark on this game with that goal I'll make two more substitutes and take off players that I want to conserve for the EuroLeague in just two days Ward Prowse coming off and Jake Hesketh coming on Terry Ambrose you know he hasn't gotten too much play time today and I'll bring him on for Nathan Redmond some great passing play we're being patient with our chances because we do have the advantage now and if we can add on one more goal with Jake Hesketh it'll close out the match and I think that might be his first goal for Southampton he's contributed to a lot with assists but I'm fairly certain this is the first goal he has scored and what a time to do so happy days as we close out the episode on a more optimistic note and a 3-1 win over Leicester City and player ratings wise it was Shane Long who got the man of the match with a 9.4 rating and moving forward to the next episode we have a lot to think about we have a competition which will have utmost importance to us for the remainder of the season that's the EuroLeague because you have to question whether we're going to be able to challenge for a Premier League title this season Spurs are increasing that gap every single single episode and I think our spot in the top four is pretty stable so I'll be focusing a lot on the EuroLeague for the remainder of episodes ahead but guys if you have enjoyed this episode of the Southampton crew mode make sure you drop a like down below subscribe if you are new around here and if you're interested I have links to my social platforms down in the description below until next time this has been Flick I'll be talking to you guys again soon